Thank you for joining us on Better Business, Better Life. Today, I am here with Tony Falkenstein. Welcome, Tony. Thanks, Deborah. Thank nice you. To be here. Lovely to have you as one of our guests. Hey, look, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you're talking about today, which is about managing people issues. Big, big topic of mine that I'm very fond of. Um, before I get started, I'd just like to, I've got the full bio of Tony online, which you can have a look at. But Tony is a real passionate entrepreneur. He has started over 50 companies so far. Um, he's been absolutely instrumental in terms of bringing um, into the education curriculum things like business entrepreneurship and he's also written this book which is the abc of business and it says never hire a person who walks slowly so we might cover a little bit more of that in our talk tony's also been married for 39 years to heather and has got one daughter who's just returned from the uk so a little bit of background tony thank you before we get started would you mind sharing with us one professional and one personal best that you have in your life okay one personal best i'm not a I've never been a great sportsman, but when I was eight, I won the beginner's doubles at tennis. Did you? Right? And yeah. I've been a passionate tennis player ever since, and I still play about three times a week. Yep. And I've never won a cup ever since for <laughs> any sport and anything. But two years ago, I entered the nationals in my age group, and I won. Oh, wow. And became runner-up in the doubles. Well, that's fantastic. So, so, so there was a, a fair few years between. <laughs> so couples. eight years and we won't even go there. They're taking a lot of years. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's really good. And what about professionally? What would you say is your professional best? So professionally, I mean, if I just look in the last year, which has been a really interesting year, the COVID year, mm -hmm. and um, and we were uh, just prior to March, we'd, uh, we'd looked at an acquisition, a uh, company called The Cylinder Guy. And then COVID came and, and I so went all in, into myself and thought, oh, no, I won't go ahead with that. And then after thinking about it, I thought, well, hey, it doesn't really matter what happens. When a when your hot water cylinder goes, you need a hot water cylinder. Yep. So it's really fairly recession proof. So we went ahead and uh, and did the acquisition and it's all, uh, it's, you know, 30% ahead. We bought it September 1, we took over and it's been 30% ahead since then. Yeah, thank, so, that's uh, wonderful. So I'm very, very pleased with that acquisition. Yeah, I can imagine. Great. So you said that in your um, your bio that you started over 50 companies. Um, they're obviously not all going now, but you've still got your fingers in quite a number of pies in terms of businesses that you work with, haven't you? Yeah, probably a lot a lot less. Um, probably, you know, probably the big ones were was Bartercard, was yeah. a big one. Um, so I had that for 15 years. Uh, Bureau, which is an office chair business. Oh, yes. And that for about 10 years. Um, and several other smaller businesses. I mean, I, I suppose I started off, my very, very first company was a company called Vogue Personnel. So I was in the personnel business uh, early on. Ah, people. And, um, <laughs> and, yeah, and really I've just been, uh, you know, there have been some good ones and some bad ones. Yep. So I, uh, so I started a company um, when Swatch was... Uh, first introduced in New Zealand and yeah. I started a company called Z-Watch to compete and um, and we both launched on the same day. Yeah. Uh, I'd gone to Hong Kong, got similar copies and and I'd rung up their receptionist of the company that was importing them and found out all the information when they were launching, what the pricing was going to be, how many models, how many colours, guarantees, everything. So I thought, well, I can better than that. And so I did in every, in every part, of the, part of the mix. So in terms of product, we have more models, more colours. In terms of uh, we had a two-year guarantee, they had a one-year guarantee. Uh, they were $69, we were $49. Uh, we both promoted similar type of lifestyle ads on TV. And they distributed only through um, jeweler shops and department stores. Mm -hmm. and we went through pharmacies and department stores, a much wider uh, retail reach. reach. Yeah. And so... Um, between September and December, we sold 27,000 watches to their 7,000. And uh, unfortunately, the strap had got brittle, the plasticizer in the strap. Oh, yeah. And so when kids put them on on Christmas Day, they went snapped immediately. And so it was an absolute disaster. So um, how do you recover from that? Uh, if I ever, you know, do my look at my lifeline, <laughs> yeah. I'd say that that would be the worst, uh, you know, that, that took me right down to zero. Right. Really really tough. Um, we were very lucky, you know, didn't lose our house. Very, very lucky because I'd been in a previous business and the auditor or the audit partner had, had seen what I was doing and thought, gee, hey, this is a good guy. Didn't know anything about Z-Watch. He rang me up 
and said, hey, listen, will you come along? We've taken over a, uh, a company, a Christchurch-based company. We need someone with your skills, and we'll give you a $100,000 sign-on bonus. Oh. <laughs> and that really just saved me. Yeah. So what was that? What was that so business? It was a company called AM Satterthwaite. It was owned by a company called, Un- uh, called Unity Group. Yep. They were property developers, and they bought this trading company. It was had a turnover of $60 million, losing $30 million. Uh, losing three million, yeah, and uh, they had six divisions and textiles, paper, printing machines, all sorts. And I sold off the various divisions. This was back in '87. Mm-hmm. In fact, this was the start of really just water. In uh, in November '87, I went to the board and said, "Listen, everything's gone now. We're sitting there at fifty thousand square feet in Gabador Place, and um, I'm just there with one uh, one PA and." Uh, and I'm in effect redundant. But I've got a couple of ideas, and one of them was to rent fax machines. Okay. And I was really following the rank Xerox model for photocopiers, which you can have any any model you like as long as you rent. Yep. Um, and other companies weren't renting because a salesman had to go and get the order, then get credit approval. Mm-hmm. And I really followed the Xerox model: was hey, I don't need credit approval. If it falls over, I put it somewhere else. Yep. So people renting don't need a new machine; they, they look new. And so that's what happened. And uh, and so they said, yeah, we'll go ahead with that. And then we started and the share market crash happened. And in January 88, the managing director came to me and said, hey, listen, we're going to receivership. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to buy this, buy your fax business for a dollar? And off we went. And so then we went, 88 was a really boon because like the global financial crisis, a lot of decisions for capital had to go a lot further up the line. Yep. And for a rental, any branch manager could approve could it. Do it in the OPEX, yeah. And then we looked around for another product we could rent, and I'd seen water coolers on uh, on American sitcoms. Well, try that. So is that because where it started from? It was just some, it adding something else to the rental suite of products. Yeah, that's all it was. Ah. And we'd um, and so people and yeah, so I bought six water coolers. So people were, at that stage were more into jogging and and just that health thing was starting to kick in. Yep. And so anyway, I bought six water coolers. They went out the first day. And so that was the start of the water business. Fantastic. So it's really interesting, isn't it? Because people think that, you know, they see successful business people and they think, oh, well, they've had an easy ride. But it's often lots of ups and downs, isn't it? It's sort of a roller coaster ride. What, apart from losing everything in the Z Watch thing, what are the other sort of big challenges that you've had in your career as an entrepreneur? Well, I would say that, um, like I've always said, if I had my way again, there's no way I'd start my own business. Oh, really? <laughs> um, because it is, you know, it takes, you know, we had seven years, I suppose, and, you know, really skimping and not knowing that close to the line between success and failure is so close for the bank, you know, to come in. You're sitting there right on your limit and everything, something goes wrong a little bit. Yeah. And you're, uh, you know. You can lose everything. You lose everything. Yeah. And, you know, prior to that, I've been in a corporate job, <laughs> earning a good salary, travelling Re- up the front. Regular nice pay. Cars, all <laughs> yeah. that sort of stuff. Yep. And, and when I wanted to leave, I could leave. Um, and so with a with your own business, you can't. Yeah. You never leave. Uh, but anyway, you know, afterwards, I mean, people would say, oh, you're only saying that. Well, look at you now. But, hey, it was, it was that place for seven years. Yep. Things have changed for the better now, thank goodness. So we're here to talk about people specifically today, and I saw, you know, your book talks about never hire a person who walks slowly. Where does that come from? What's the, the rationale behind that? Uh, it really it really came from a from a, a lecture I did at Hawke University that was, uh, or to MBA students, and someone just asked me this question. Um, give me one thing on, on what you look for in new employees. And that's the first thing that came out of my head. And there was a big laugh. So I thought, well, that's a nice thing to nice put of a book. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, but it is true. I mean, we have, when we hire people, we the receptionist is a really important part in this whole uh, employment thing. Yep. Uh, just watching how they come in, how they treat uh, her, him, or, him or her mm-hmm. um, is really important. Yep. And uh, and I don't think it's it's not 100% foolproof. But because uh, often I walk so you know, you often can be deep in thought. And you, yeah. And you may not, uh, uh, you know, you may, you may walk slowly. But in general, people who, people who walk slowly tend to, who walk quickly, tend to work quickly. quickly. as well. Fantastic. 
Now, I know when Warner was here in the last episode, he talked about the fact that the real reason he was able to kind of let go of the business and spend time with his wife and his family was because he had the right people around him. But that's not always easy to get the right people. And sometimes the people you start the business with end up not being the people who continue on the business. So right people, right seats is always important. I suppose from your point of view, what's been the biggest people challenges you've had? Well, it is getting the right people on the bus and you're always moving the people on the bus to, to get the right people. Yep. What's been really interesting over COVID has been, um, you know, one of the good things about COVID was, or well, the lockdown was we had time to think mm. and and business, business has changed. And, and one of the things we had to think about, and it was a, it was a terrible one to have to do, but um, the the time of the door-to-door salesman is sort of ending. Yep. And and if you just keep on going, we keep on going and we have the same people. And really we weren't, the water business is fairly mature. We weren't getting a lot of new business and we were paying these people who are really order clerks. Yep. Um, and that's all we needed. We needed what we call an internal sales team now who just take the orders and look after any, you know, key key customers. They, you know, they want a water cooler shifted or they want to... Uh, new water cooler somewhere yeah. into a tarpery or something. As long as we get it there, they don't really want to see a salesman on their door every five minutes saying, oh, how are things going and all that sort of stuff. So uh, so, so the horrible thing for us was uh, removing four or five, five people who'd been there, um, well, on average, probably 15, 16 years. Yeah. And so they'd all been good friends in effect. And Part of the suddenly, family. Yeah. yeah. So suddenly you're saying, hey, it's time to go. Um, that was tough, but, you know, that's, it's, uh, we knew it was the right thing for the future. Yep. So it had to, had to be done. And so when you have to make a tough call like that, because you have to sometimes to survive, mm. right, um, how would you handle that? Because, as you said there, you're potentially part of an extension of the family. They've been there for a long time. Yeah, I mean, this was quite, I mean, it was quite unusual, but, uh, yeah, we just had to, we had to go through the process and say, hey, this is what we're looking at restructuring. Yep. Um, they, in effect, they all took uh, they all took voluntary redundancy immediately and said, no, we'll take the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but still, it was you know, for, from their from their point of view, they're they're saying, gee, we gave all our time and life to to this company, and now look what they do to us. Yeah. Um, so, but you've looked after them, so yeah. Yeah. So from our side, we'd say, "Hey, listen, we've looked after you. We're taking you on every year on overseas trips and yeah. all sorts." But I can understand how they think. Yeah, and things change. And, and as I said, as a business owner, we often have to make those tough calls. Um, Warner talked about the fact that sometimes you can have a rotten apple in the business, and that can have such a massive impact on the whole team. Just as a good person can have a positive impact. But have you ever had a person in an organisation who's been really detrimental? Yeah, I. Um, we, we take the, there's something a lot of people don't know, but, but we say, hey, they're just not worth having there. If mm-hmm. we have to pay them out, we feel, well, you just shouldn't, yep. but you do. We say, hey, listen, you know, it's that uh, get rid of them very, very quickly. Yep. So so I have a I have a phrase or something, the, probably the best hint I could probably give you today, yep. the best phrase you'll ever, ever use is, um, hey, you're not, you don't seem to be happy. And then wait, mm-hmm. and it's either yes or no. Yeah. Either they say, "Well, uh, no, listen, I, I'm not happy here." Hey, well, let's you know, if you're not happy, you just shouldn't be here. I mean, yep. it's a, and hey, let's come to an arrangement. If they say yes, I'm happy. Well, then we say, "Well, hey, you're certainly not showing." Me. <laughs> Talk to your face. <laughs> and uh, you know, the the thing has to. You're going to have to, you know, the whole whatever they're doing, and uh, you know, if they're just a uh, an evil person or, or just a person who talks and just a gossip monger or yep. whatever, we were then able to tell them straight, hey, listen, and that's not making not making you happy, it's not making anyone else happy. Yeah. Generally, we find that they, either way, they, they go. Yeah. And you're right, because it has to be a relationship that works for both the employer and the employee, right? And if yeah. the employee is unhappy, um, it's important that they actually go off for their own benefit and find something that they actually genuinely love, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a we have a saying that's been right through the company for the if you're not in business for fun and profit, what the hell are you doing there? Yeah. And uh, and I say it for the employee too. I say, hey, if you're if you're not in in a job that you um, that you're learning from and enjoying, mm-hmm. then why be here? 
Yeah. So probably someone who's a who's a civil servant, a bureaucrat, possibly wouldn't like it in our business because you know they want to know fixed rules, etc. Yep. And people from our business would hate to work for a government department. That's just different just nature fit. of people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if I was to ask, you know, one of the employees at just um, what's it called now? Just Life Group. Just Life Group. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say Just Water, but Just Life Group. Um, do they? They understand, you know, are they there for the, the core purpose of the business? Like what would they what would they say about the, the company as an employee? Yeah, I'd like to say that uh, that we, you know, we live by, so our values are the acronym FIRST. So it's fun, integrity, respect, service and trust. Nice. So the fun part is saying, hey, we want to provide you with, with an environment that you, that you enjoy, um, but you know, again, that um, having to make a profit, expect you to work while you're here. Yep. But we provide a, you know, nice facilities. You can uh, you can have uh, there's lots of food. You make your own breakfast here and, and okay. lunch here. Yep. Uh, we have a massage person come in. Hmm. We do some nice nice things for people. Yep. Um, and and then that comes down to respect. So you know, and I always say that if I ever fire anyone, yeah. I'll say, hey, listen, that's uh, and I tell them when they when I hire them, the reason. You get fired is because you show lack of respect. So I will respect everyone in the company, and I expect the same respect back. So if you if you decide to go and sell water, our water to someone else, and take the money, yep. Well, that's not showing respect. Fair enough. Yep. Okay. And then if we look at the, on the positive side, you know, you must have some stars within the team. Um, what do you think would creates a star within an environment? Yeah, I say that uh, that uh, one star equals two good people. So a star is just uh, you want as many stars as you can get. Yeah. Um, How do you employ stars? How do you know they're a star before you employ them? Yeah, you you often don't, um, but you certainly try and try and get them. We put a lot of you know that uh, hire slowly and fire fast is, is probably pretty important. Yep. Um, and yeah, we try, we try, we try and get. You're always just it's always a big massage of. Um, of just getting the right people in the right place on the bus and it, and it never never really stops. Yeah. And then as you grow, and I think you've said this, as you grow, the people, some people just can't grow at the same rate. Yeah. And that's... Um, All the roles change significantly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we, look, we look at this last year as a classic example. I mean, we've had to reimagine business in huge ways, which means that the role that might have been there six months ago may not be there now. Yeah. yeah. I remember John Spence when he came over, he talked about, you know, if, if you've got the wrong person in on the bus to just to fire them, well, you can do that in the US, you can't do that quite so easily over here in New Zealand. You but can't, but you have to, yeah, we, we take the uh, we take the hit. Yep. So we, if we have to, we go through the, are you happy? Yeah. That doesn't work. We say, hey, listen, it's not working, not working between us. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, it's, uh, and so you are going to have to go. Yep. And so we'll have this chat now. And, uh the worst, and this is what I think a lot of companies don't realise, they, they, they're so scared of personal grievances. Yep. But the most chances are as long as you go part the, part the way through the process and uh, and show some respect for them, yep. um, the most you're, it's ever going to cost you is three months, three months pay. Mm-hmm. And so often we're prepared to pay that three months yep. to have them out tomorrow. <laughs> because the damage they do when they're in oh, there is just yeah. um, you can't even measure that, can you? No. Yeah. Okay. So we like to give our listeners sort of three tips. Our listeners are generally sort of, you know, established businesses. They, they, they're definitely privately owned businesses working with the leadership team. We like to give them sort of three tips or tools or pointers they can take away with them. What would be the sort of three things you'd really like to share for either up and coming entrepreneurs or those who might be struggling a wee bit after the, the, the pandemic? Well, I, I suppose when we look at a, a new venture and, but it'd be the same for a startup is we say, Hey, can this be a million dollar business? If it's yeah. not a million dollars, we don't want to waste our time with it. So there are some businesses that we have started and we've said, no, listen, it's not going to be, it's, it's not the million dollar business. Let's give this away and throw it to someone else. Yep. Um, so so I think that's uh, that's important, just being realistic, not not going in because you think, gee, this would be fun. Yeah. We'd love to do this. But um if you really want to get lifestyle, you just have to get up to you have to get up to a million dollars pretty quickly, and uh, depending, yeah, unless it's unless it's a consulting business or something where yeah. everything is um, is profit. Um, I 
I'm big on on exercise, just looking looking healthy and, uh, and. I see you've got an arrow ring on. Arrow ring, yeah. yes. <laughs> doing doing uh, exercise and do it every morning, and you just feel much better for the day. Yep. Uh, so it's the first thing in the morning thing for you. Yeah. Yep. Before you start. Yep. What time do you get up in the morning? I te- I'm a morning person. Yep. And I call them. I call that uh, six to seven. Well, it's normally five thirty to six thirty is my golden hour. Yep. Um, come down. Feed the dogs, feed the cat, and then I've got my own. Yeah. Um, I like. Uh, I put a lot of emphasis on this um, thinking overnight. Yep. So, uh, so I can, you know, my wife will say, in a dinner party or something, Tony can have the worst crisis in the world. He tells me that at night I don't sleep all night. He goes straight to sleep. The next morning, I know what I'm going to do, <laughs> and uh, and I'm relying on my. Uh, uh, my subconscious to to tell me that. Yep. And that's very much the same thing I, I wrote in the book about, um, you know, how to have new ideas is, is go for a walk, no iPhone, no iPod, uh, no dog, no partner, yep. and go for a walk for an hour and a half and you'll just find so many things will come into your, into your mind yes. and you get exercise as well. So I suppose it's a bit like meditation, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I must admit, I've always struggled with meditation in terms of lying on a mat and, and being okay. in med. But I do use it as the quiet time, you know, getting that right. clarity break to go out there on your own, no distractions. I really find that is my form of meditation, yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think mixing with people too that you uh, that are sort of, I don't say winners, don't go out of, out of your way to do it, but, uh, you know, so as you know, I belong to EO. Yes, yeah. Um, so you're just getting, you're mixing with people who, who are really wanting to wanting to be in business. Yeah. So um, so often otherwise you can, you're sort of wasting, wasting your friend's time. You're not really getting anything from the relationship. Uh, and so, I mean, that's fine to be casual, but if in uh, – if you're with if if you want to be in business, you probably should join some business organisation and be talking to people who are who are also doing it. Yeah, I think part of the the value of EO and you know I was a member for three or three and a half years was the forum is actually having that chance to discuss with your peers openly things that perhaps you can't talk to other people about, and they get it because they've yeah. they've been there, they've done that, they've got the t-shirt, or they're going for it themselves. And I think that's the the real value. But you're in that. I was in baby EO. You're in this sort of you know, the big EO. What's the the big value you get from that organisation? Really, just the just the people and what they're doing. You you learn from other people. Like yeah. at the moment, I'm doing a uh, an EO Harvard course. Oh yeah. Or I do it. It's next week, and this one's online. And I hadn't. I've done it. I've done two before, and again, each time I realise how good they are. Because what happens? You're, you it's a total case study, and so they give you eight or ten case studies, and quite thick, and they're real live cases, live live companies. Yep. But generally, they're they're American. Um, and it really makes you relate them to your business, and they make they make sure you do relate it to your business. Yep. And just some of the things that I've even learned, you know, just from looking at these case studies, which we've got to, uh, you know, present next week. Fantastic. Okay. So, uh, so I'm you know a lifelong learner, and I think it is. You just need to always keep on learning. Yeah, I agree completely. Fantastic. Okay, so now if people want to get in contact with you, they want to get hold of some of your water or your. Um, any of your services, what's the best way for them to get in contact with you? So I'm uh, Tony F yep. at justlife.co.nz. Fantastic. The main way. Or you can go straight on our website, yep. and which is either Just Life Group or Just Water or yep. Univen or Solitude. <laughs> any of the other um, so names, yeah. yeah. And we have a, you'll see on them, everyone has a personal guarantee by, by myself oh. is uh, with my phone number and my email address on it. And I think I'm the only chief executive any public company that has his, has his mobile number and email address on the website, saying that I will treat I treat every customer, shareholder, um, employee like a, as though they're a member of my own family. If you think I'm not living up to that, then please call me directly. That's fantastic. I didn't realise that. And that um, so has that ever? Uh, I've got to finish that, but I can't now because I've got all these questions. Has that have you ever had anybody sort of actually take you up on that? So, no, quite a quite a quite a lot. Yeah. People say, hey, you know, if I ordered didn't arrive on Friday, what am I gonna do? I get a lot of, you know, texts say over the weekend and things. Yeah. Uh, but to have the chief executive answer that is yeah, that's great. phenomenal. Yeah. 
Fantastic. Well done. A great initiative. Okay. Well, look, thank you so much for coming on. Really, really appreciate it. Um, it's always good to hear, you know, from the horse's mouth what really goes on in business. And I appreciate you being so open and honest. Thank you. No, pleasure to be here. Thanks very Thanks. much, Sally. Thank you.